Hello, hello. I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students into medical school and other professional programs. Today, we're orbiting around the topic of circular motion and gravitation. These fundamental concepts in physics explain how celestial bodies dance around the universe and how everyday objects behave on Earth. We're about to launch into an exploration of the forces that keep our world and the cosmos in perpetual motion, as well as hopefully getting you a few more points on the ChemPhys section. I'd say both are equally important. Let's start with understanding what circular circular motion or centripetal force really is. Circular motion is the movement of an object along the circumference of a circle. So what does that mean? Here is a circle. The circumference is the outside. Here is the object. It's just this dot moving along the outside. That's it. That's circular motion. So why is it so hard? Well, there are quite a few misconceptions that I need to make sure we dispel before we jump into the nitty gritties here. Specifically, it's crucial to distinguish between velocity and speed. Velocity is a vector quantity. It's displacement over time. It matters what you're displacing. Well, speed is just the distance over time. It doesn't matter if you're running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. As long as you're doing it at a constant meters per second, speed isn't changing. However, velocity would be. If I'm going back and forth, velocity was zero. I displaced nothing. Zero divided by time, zero. Another important fact is that in circular motion, velocity is always changing. I like to show change by a triangle here, whereas speed is not changing necessarily. Speed will be constant unless told otherwise. And because velocity is always changing in circular motion, that means we have some acceleration, which means we have a force. But it'd be really annoying to calculate that acceleration, so we won't. And you'll never need to for the MCAT, because there's a convenient equation that does it with velocity. Force is just going to be the negative mass in kilograms times velocity squared divided by the radius of the circle. Note here that the negative sign is indicating the direction of the force towards the center of the circle, which makes sense. If you're spinning around in a circle, there's a force pulling it in. Now let's do a quick concept check here. If an object is moving in a circle with a constant speed, is its velocity constant? Well, we just talked about this. Speed? Sure, it's constant. I just picked three meters per second here as an example. The velocity will be changing because it's going in a circle. Because it's going in a circle, we know that displacement is constantly being changed. Now that we've spent some time figuring out circles and the force of circles, let's make it really big and go into space. Now let's move on to gravity. Gravitation is the force of attraction between two masses. It's described by Newton's law of universal gravitation, which means we figured this out a long time ago. It looks like a scary equation, but really it's not too bad. We've got g here, which is just a constant, and then a mass and a mass. So in this case, we're using the mass of the sun and the mass of the earth. And then we're dividing that all by the distance between them squared from their centers, which is really important. The MCAT loves asking if it's the center of the sides. It's the center. So what this tells us when we're looking at this equation is that the distance is crazy important. If you double the distance between two objects, the gravitational force will drop by a factor of four. In a uniform circular motion, such as the Earth orbiting the Sun, the gravitational force provides the necessary centripetal force to maintain an appropriate orbit with another example problem. What will happen to the gravitational force between two objects if the distance between them triples? Well, according to Newton's law, the gravitational force should be reduced by a factor of nine. How do we figure this out? Well, let's take a look at that formula again. So we have the masses over distance squared. We know that the masses aren't changing. It's just the distance. So let's just plug in some numbers. That's going to be easiest to do in the MCAT. So let's do it now. And great numbers to do are one. I've got a mass of one times a mass of one. That is one meter squared away. And we're going to triple that now. So let's say this is equal to the force one. Say force two then. We still have the same masses, one times one. But we're tripling that distance, right? So that's three squared. So we have one and then equaling our F1. So F2 then will equal one over nine, one ninth. Now we want to compare those two. We can just say F2 one over nine divided by one over one. And this just equals, there you go. There we have it. You are now a gravity and circular motion expert. You should be able to get these questions now for the ChemPhys section. If you want to try a really hard question to make sure that you've absolutely got it, stick around. We'll do that right now. Take a few moments to read on through and try out this problem. A satellite of mass m equals 500 kilograms is in a stable circular orbit around the Earth. The radius of the orbit 
is r equals 10 times 10 to the 6 meters from the center of Earth. Given that the gravitational constant g equals g times 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed divided by kilograms divided by seconds squared, and the mass of Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, calculate the orbital speed of the satellite. Well, let's walk on through. So Start by writing out our equation. So we know force is going to equal the gravitational constant times m1 times m2 all over the radius or distance squared. And we know the gravitational force is acting as centripetal force. So then we have to also write out our centripetal force, which luckily we've covered in this video, mv squared over r. And we know that they're the same thing. So let's set them equal to each other. We have f and f. So we'll just say g times m1, m2, or r squared equals m v squared over r. So let's see what we can simplify and cancel out here. Well, we've got an r over here, so we can cancel one of those out with one of these. We've got an m, so let's cancel an m. Then I'll rewrite what we got. g m2 equals velocity squared. And let's solve for velocity. So we'll just square root this. So we've got g m. There's an r here so for that guy. So gm over r, it's all being square root equal to velocity. And from here, we just plug in our values. So velocity equals 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11th times 5.972 times 10 to the 4, all divided by 10 times 10 to the 6th. Got to remember to square root that. If we solve this out, we get that the velocity is equal to 7.5 times 10 three meters per second. Well, technically we get 6.3 times 10 to the third, but 7.5 times 10 to the third is the closest answer from our list of options. So that's going to be the one we have to go with. Answer B. On the MCAT, you'll need to apply these principles to solve problems in physics and also appreciate their relevance in the medical field, like understanding how centrifuge separate blood components. Hopefully this video will help you get a few more points on that tough chem phys section. Thank you so much for watching our video on circular motion and gravitation and I'll see you next time.